We're going to move on to Hunter's question next. It says, can you break down the 25% savings rate? Is that entirely for retirement? If I am saving for a house, can I do 15% towards retirement and 10% towards the house? Or does it need to be on top of 25% and also saving for the house? And I think that this is a good baseline question because we always talk about, hey, our guideline is shoot for saving 25%. So what do you guys mean by that? Yeah, right now, and Hunter, I love it. I mean, it'd be great, right? I would love to say, hey, here's what you do. You just save 25% for retirement, 25% for the future. And then above and beyond that, then you save for your down payment, then you save for the house. But I think we know, and especially in this world in which we're living right now, where home prices have skyrocketed, interest rates are high, inflation has been rampant over the past couple of years, it's settled down now a little bit that life is expensive and life is hard. And so while it might be the ideal to save 25% for retirement and on top of that, save for the house, that might not be the reality. And if someone is living in that situation, Brian, it's not the reality, how would you encourage them to think about that? Like how should they prioritize how they attack those two goals? Well, I, I like to give context for people because uh, you see, y'all know that we actually, we're, we're pretty good at balancing the life decisions, but also the math decisions. And I know, I think the team's gonna be able to bring it up. What can 25% savings rate do for you by age? We actually have a deliverable if you go to moneyguy.com slash resources. And you'll see this is going to get, kind of give you the math or the analytics behind why we think 25% is so awesome. Because you can see anybody in their 20s who starts saving and investing, um, you're going to be golden if you can get up to 25%. It's more aspirational primarily mm-hmm. in your 20s because even less than 20% does a lot. But really from, your, 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 from 30 years of age, even to the mid-40s, it at least lets you have a fighting shot of your money creating some type of financial independence for you in the future. Now, the second thing, and this kind of gets to the point of the question that Hunter has, is that, man, life happens. And I think a lot of people, when they see the financial order of operations, because it is a, you know, it's a numeric nine-part checklist, we think, well, man, when I graduate from to, to four, I'm definitely going to go right to five, and then I'll go to six. But that's not always how life happens. You might go from you're in step five, you get laid off, or you're making a big life decision like you are trying to buy your house, where you temporarily might get pulled back into two or three mm-hmm. just because you get laid off or some big life change. We've even done, I don't know if that's something the team can pull up, but we've done deliverables where the foo, instead of it being you go through each step, you might have some moments in time where you go backwards because life threw you a curveball or you had a big life decision like the new house or the kids. But when you do have those moments where you separate from you're having to go backwards, you do need to have a feeling of, oh my gosh, I am a, I'm not where I was. I'm not at the high watermark of the financial order of operations so that you don't feel too comfortable because... I'm not going to tell you you're never going to, because I've done it. I'd be a hypocrite if I told you this. Is when I started my company, I was unable to save fully for you know the 25 percent for retirement because every dollar I had coming in was just to pay the bills. I mean, I was make, yeah. just trying to to make it and survive in those first three years of my business that I was not saving. But I've had a scarcity, and I felt like you know I, I even had a hard time sleeping during that period because there was just so much that I felt the weight of, oh my gosh, if I can't get this thing to be a success, if I can't get it on track. And I think that me having that feeling of of intensity of getting back on track allowed me to minimize the time that I was off track because that's that's going to happen to every one of you guys. You don't know what's going to happen in life, but there are going to be obstacles. There are going to be goals that take you sideways. And that's why we've tried to build rules in. Like Think about your house purchase. First house, we tell you it's a okay to put down three to five percent, not twenty percent like a lot of you know goo, financial gurus who've now because of the post inflation they finally have caught up to the rest of us and realize hey I need to adjust these rules to reflect the world we live in. I've always tried to give you rules that reflect the life I've lived, the financial mutant lifestyle, so that I'm not a hypocrite. I'm not telling you something because I've experienced enough of life and I've worked with enough clients that I've tried to create these rules so that they actually are all-terrain vehicles to get you through whatever season or phase or terrain that you're ex- exposed to. That's what we're going to do is just don't let that that intensity fade when you are off track. And give yourself some grace. If you do have to back down the 25% savings, or, or not necessarily back it down, but if you have to shift to where some portion of that's moving towards that 3 to 5% for the down payment, 
That's okay. I mean, again, if we think about our goals, money is nothing more than a tool that allows us to achieve the goals that we have. Financial independence is a goal, but I got to believe home ownership is also a goal. And yeah. odds are you would like to achieve home ownership before you achieve financial independence so that you can set roots and start a family and do all these things. So it's okay if you have to deviate from the buy the book food plan so that you can start achieving some of those goals. But just like Brian said, you have to have some healthy fear about getting back on course, getting back on track, getting back to saving, and figure out how you can minimize the time that you're not continuing to build for your future financial self. Yeah, I think a lot of you guys, when you have big life decisions, you're going to notice that step four, the emergency reserves, is going to kind of grow and then it's going to you know constrict back down mm-hmm. because I mean when you're saving for a down payment there's nothing that says that you don't go from 3 to 6 months maybe you've gone up to 9 to 10 because your your house down payment fund is pushing your cash way up but then it's going to maybe as soon as you buy the house go down to 2 months mm-hmm. 3 months and you ought to feel the intensity I got to get that 3 to 6 months back up before I can get back to doing Roth and all the other things just kind of understand where the guardrails are with those financial order of operations love it 